Okay, so today we're going to be going over remainder theorem, and then we're going to go over factor theorem and kind of show how the two are related. Okay, so what remainder theorem is, it's a great shortcut to figure out if when you're dividing polynomials, you get a remainder or not. And it actually gives you the remainder. So usually what you guys are used to is using synthetic division or long division to figure out, um, you know, dividing polynomials and seeing if there is the remainder and what the remainder is. So remainder theorem skips all through that division and synthetic division, that long division and synthetic division, and it goes right to what the remainder is. Okay, I'm going to show you the proof for why it works, and in the next video I'm going to give you some examples on how to use it. Okay, hold on, here we go. So, say you're dividing polynomials. Here I have f of x and d of x. Okay, f of x is going to be our polynomial, and we're dividing it by some other function, d of x. Okay, and it's equal to, what you guys are used to, you get some quotient, this q, plus whatever the remainder is at this r, divided by the whole, divided by what your d of x is. That's what you guys are used to. If this doesn't make sense, please ask me in class. Okay? I just kind of wrote a short form here. Okay? When you're dividing polynomials, you're trying to find the factors, because ultimately you're trying to find the roots of the polynomial. So, usually what you're dividing by is going to be a linear function. Like this x minus k right here is a linear function, k is a constant, um, and it has a slope of 1. That's really important to understand when you guys did synthetic division, you always had to make sure you were dividing by a linear function that has a slope of 1. So this x minus k, I put that in for d of x, okay, because that's what we're going to mostly be looking at, linear functions with a slope of 1. If it doesn't, if it's not a linear function with a slope of 1, then you need to figure out a way of making it that way. We're going to talk more about that later. So what I'm going to do here is substitute this x minus k in for the d of x to this original equation, and I, let's just go over here for that. And as you can see, instead of f of x over d of x, I replaced it with the x minus k. And same with the r of x over d of x, I replaced it with the x minus k. So all I did so far was substitute. Now, what I'm going to do is do a little bit of manipulation by multiplying both sides by x minus k. So I multiply this side by, since I'm dividing, it cancels out the x minus k, you end up with just f of x. Okay? You have to multiply both of these things by x minus k, because you have to multiply the whole side. So I'm doing q of x times x minus k. That's what you get right here. And then again, just like the f of x, the r of x over x minus k, the x minus k cancels, and you're left with f r of x, the remainder. Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to put in the k value that I had originally right here. I'm going to input that into my function. So now I have f of k equals q of k times k minus k, because it was x minus k, but I inputted the k, substitute that in. k minus k is 0. Any number minus itself is 0. So this whole thing right here basically cancels out, because 0 times, it doesn't matter what number this is, it's going to be 0. So that cancels out, and you're left with f of k equals r of k, or equals r, the remainder. So f of k is actually equal to the remainder. So instead of doing the whole long division, synthetic division thing, all you would really have to do is input k into the original function, and you get what the remainder would be. That's all you have to do. Nice and simple. Now, if there is no remainder, or the remainder is equal to 0, if f of k is equal to 0, there is no remainder. If there's no remainder, then you can say that x minus k is a factor. And this is important. That means it divides evenly. And that's called factor theorem. This is going to be really important later on when we're figuring out the roots of polynomials. So that's really important. Whenever you get an f of k equal to 0, there's no remainder. No remainder, it's a factor. And you, you solve part of the problem of that, that polynomial, figuring out the roots. If you have any questions, let me know.